Hey everybody, AJ here. Firstly, I just wanna say I hope everybody is having a happy and a safe new year. You know, for a while now, I've been thinking and toying with the idea of doing a dedicated video running benchmarking tests on the Surface Pro X, especially now that we've got 64-bit apps emulating on the Pro X. But after a while of thinking it through, I've decided I'm not gonna give a dedicated video running benchmarking tests on the Pro X, and I want you guys to know why. I know that a lot of people will look at the benchmarking tests of the Pro X and they'll do the immediate comparison of Microsoft's SQ1 processor versus Apple's new M1 processor. I think we can all safely assume that the M1 on benchmarking tests will outperform the Pro X in almost every regard because there's videos out there already with the M1 going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Intel's i7 and i9 processors and I think we can comfortably assume that the SQ1 won't be up there in i9 territory. When I first saw the benchmarking results coming from the Apple M1, I was really excited and super surprised, but I just thought it was a great example of what ARM processing can do. And it got me thinking about the future of ARM and what it means for both PC and Mac. Then I had to pull myself back and remind myself that text and specs on a piece of paper and benchmarking results aren't the be all and the end all of anything. The smartphone in your pocket right now is a thousand times more powerful than the computers used to launch the Apollo 11, but none of us are controlling spaceships with our phone, are we? This is internal. 12. Or maybe to put it in a bit more of a relatable term, when you go and buy a car, do you look at two things, the horsepower and how quickly it gets from zero to 100, or do you look at a range of different things? Do you look at whether you want a sedan or an SUV or a hatchback? Is it big enough to fit all your groceries and can you, I load my bike in there when I go for cycling trips on the weekend? Do I like the style of it? And most importantly, does it fit my lifestyle? I think you have to look at the whole picture when you're comparing anything that you're gonna buy which is why I don't want to look at just benchmarking when I look at the Pro X. You know, if someone says to me right now, AJ, you have to give up all your computers and only pick one to use from now on, what computer would you pick? I'd have to say right now and for the past year, I'd say give me the Surface Pro X. Well, actually, I'd say give me the Surface Pro X with the new SQ2 processor, but I'd still pick the Pro X as my daily device. When I think of the Pro X, I think of a device that's super thin and super light, it's got 4G LTE built into it, so when I'm traveling around for work, I've got a device that's thin, light, and always connected to the internet. It converts from a laptop to a tablet in a second. I can pull out that pen and start writing and drawing all over the screen, and I cannot overstate how important the pen is for me. And most importantly, it's running a full desktop operating system. This one here is running Windows 10 Pro, and I've got it on the Insider Build 21277, so that means I also have the ability to emulate 64-bit apps. I feel that if you look at a Pro X and base it purely on its benchmarking results, you may overlook a device that is perfectly suited to your needs. Everything about the Pro X that I love has nothing to do with the text and the specs, but it's about how well it fits into my lifestyle. What I'm super keen to see though is the role that ARM processors are gonna play in both PCs and Macs moving forward. I sort of feel like we're at a turning point in computing history, and I can't wait to look back on 2021 and see the innovations that come about from both PCs and Macs alike, thanks to moving to ARM architecture. In June, we announced that the Mac is taking another huge leap forward by transitioning to Apple Silicon. I feel like Apple's announcement of their move to ARM processors means that everybody wins. It means that there is gonna be more focus on ARM as a viable alternative to Intel or AMZ. It means that there's gonna be more research and development, not just from Apple, but from other manufacturers as well as to how they can better utilize ARM in their own technologies. A few weeks ago, Bloomberg reported Microsoft is looking at building their own in-house ARM processors for the Azure servers, and that this technology may one day find itself into their laptop range as well. If you have both Apple and Microsoft looking at ARM processing as an alternative to Intel or AMD, it means that you have these huge tech giants putting research, development, and funding into best utilizing ARM processing in desktops moving forward. So I think the big winner here isn't the Apple or the Microsoft team. The big winner is consumers because we're gonna have companies creating and innovating like we haven't seen because these new architectures and new processes are gonna make things possible that weren't possible before. Now, at the start of this video, I did say I'm not gonna create a dedicated video looking at benchmarks of the Surface Pro X, but that doesn't mean I wasn't gonna give you guys benchmark results at all. I mean, you've sat through this video so far, so I feel it's only right to give you some performance indications of the Pro X. So let's dig into these benchmarks a little bit more. Um, looking at the past Mark CPU comparison, 
You know, I was shocked that the SQ1 came so close to the seventh gen i7 processor. The i7 7660U only marginally beat my SQ1. And in the Novabench results, the GPU on the Pro X was scored 151% higher over a seventh gen i5 processor. And I understand that these are no i9 benchmarking results, but this does actually explain why for my everyday tasks, the Surface Pro X feels like a more than capable machine because I'm essentially getting comparable, if not better than seventh gen i7 processors inside of my Pro X, but with the benefits of being on an ARM SOC. You know, the nerd in me would have loved to see these numbers be double or triple, but honestly, even if they were quadrupled, it wouldn't actually make any difference the way I use my Surface Pro X. So it's more of a pipe dream of oh, having the best benchmarking results. It's cool on a piece of paper, but it actually doesn't change the way I use my computer at all. But I hope this does help you understand that looking at just benchmarking alone is only looking at one small portion of a device or anything in general that you can't get caught up too much on the text and the specs of something. Look at how it fits into your lifestyle in general and see if that product, not just the Pro X, but anything is the right product for you based on how it fits into your lifestyle and not just what it looks like on a piece of paper. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.